Remember a time whenever a new product was being announced, there was new technologies, new and exciting advancements pushing the industry forward, new graphical technologies, new features to be harnessed, taken advantage of, new visual fidelity heights to be made available to consumers, and the excitement surrounding this was unparalleled. This was a simpler time, a more competitive time, where the market fought for your dollars and the world reaped the benefits from all the advances in technologies, which came out hand over fist, month after month, year after year, and every time something new came out, it pushed the industry forward. Now, fast forward 10 or 15 years, and... Well, that's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man. You finished. Man, it's game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Maybe we could build a fire, sing a couple of songs, huh? Why don't we try that? The gaming landscape has changed rather considerably. Graphical fidelity really isn't that much of an issue as we are pushing the boundaries of photorealistic graphics in modern day games with even more basic hardware such as the PlayStation 4. And due to this slowing technology growth, consumers are now being forced to pay more money for the games that they enjoy through things like microtransactions, cosmetics, little loot boxes, and all kinds of other nonsense. Now on the hardware side, gains are smaller, prices are inflating, excuses all over the place, and there's limited competition on all technology fronts, from CPUs to GPUs and memory and beyond. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at NVIDIA's fiscal year 2019 Q1 earnings. For you guys that don't understand how fiscal years work, that means Q1 2018. So we're going to take a look at that and see exactly what this means for the industry. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, NVIDIA's earnings statement just came out, and I noticed a few things that really jumped out at me straight away, and I wanted to share this with you guys, and what this really does mean for the industry, the whole technology industry, and gaming as a whole. First off, traditionally, Q1 is actually a low period for the year, but as you guys can see here at $3.2 billion, they're actually up over Q4 2018, which means they sold more in Q1 or made more money in Q1 2018 than they did in Q4 2017, which has the holiday season, which for most consumers is the largest buying period of the year. And as you can see, the gaming GPUs actually did outsell Q1 2018 by a little bit. It comes out to only being 1% difference, but still it was a little bit higher. There are other factors, of course, such as the data center going up and OEMs going up. Regardless, this is a very curious number here. Since if we look at Q1 FY17, so Q1 2016, we see 1.3 billion versus 1.4 billion. So that's a hundred billion dollar or a hundred million dollar drop there. And then we see on Q4 FY17, 2.1 billion, just about 2.2 and then 1.9. So there's about a 10% decrease on each of these years versus right now where we're seeing a 10% increase. Now the more stark numbers is if we actually look at year over year numbers. So Q1 of FY19 versus Q1 of FY18, we see the massive increase from 1.9 billion all the way up to 3.2. And that comes out to being a 65.6% increase year over year in the same time frame. Even more ridiculous is if we compare the $1.305 billion from just Q1 2016, so pre-Pascal, to $3.207 billion. And that nets a massive 145.7% increase in just two years. And for those of you who are curious... Gaming from FY17 Q1, so in those two years, has jumped up 150.8%, and the data center has jumped up 390.2%. So today, we're looking at $701 million 
as compared to only 143 million in Q1 FY17. So that's obviously where a massive amount of that revenue has come from. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to NVIDIA making nearly two and a half times as much money in just two years compared to pre-Pascal. Now, what does this actually mean to us as gamers? And what kind of signal does this send to the entire market as to the future direction of things? To me, this is a clear indicator that the way that things used to be done, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, that's over. That's done and over with, and that's not coming back anytime soon. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be saying, yeah, well, prices were inflated and because of mining and, and this and that. Well, sure, to a degree, I'm sure that's the case. But to go from $1.3 billion two years ago up to $3.2 billion in, a, in the same quarter. So that's not year over year. That's year over, you know, the previous year. Uh, so I'm th talking about Q1 2016 versus Q1 2018. That's only two years, and you're doing two and a half times the business. Okay, even if you drop 10% off of that, it's really not that big of a deal. So what this says to me is this is the way that the market is going to be going moving forward. As an older gamer, it's really hard for me to come to grips with this particular situation because I'm used to the way things used to be, and things were great back then, like I said in the intro there. Uh, you know, every time technology came out, it was awesome. Everything kept advancing, but we're starting to hit limitations on what consumers want and need. Like I demonstrated, even a PS4 Pro or a PS4 is actually hitting the boundaries of photorealism. And for us as PC gamers, that's very, you know, limited technology. That's very basic, low-end stuff. And there's just really no need for the average gamer out there to really care about anything a whole lot better than that. For most gamers, 1080p is still just fine. The push to higher resolutions, personally, I think is going to flop because gamers don't care. 1080p is perfectly fine for most people. Uh, the big thing is, is most gamers would prefer 60 frames per second. Now on PC, there are people that want to go even higher, but that's because there's just nowhere else to go. You know, we are getting faster technology, but the game development really isn't there to take advantage of that. We don't have any games that a 1080 Ti can't run past 30 frames per second. There's just simply no game out there that's that demanding. So there's really no reason to do anything else but to upgrade to faster refresh, because like I said, nobody really cares that much about higher resolution, pretty much past 1080p or 1440p. Most people really aren't that interested in 4K as a whole. So as technology is kind of reaching that point of diminishing returns, because imagine even going past 4K, the limited difference that your eyes are going to be able to perceive is just not really going to be worth it. And nobody's going to care at that point. So what they're doing is NVIDIA is smart and figuring out that, hey, we need to slow this train down because technology is getting a little bit out of hand. Basically, we were getting too fast of products for what was out there. There was just no reason for them, uh, except for 4K. That's the only arena, but since the adoption rate's so low, it doesn't make sense there. So they took the opportunity to go ahead and slow down production. I mean, this generation of GPUs, Pascal has lasted longer than any other previous GPU generation in history. They went ahead and they're gonna raise the prices on those top performing products. Because once again, as I just said, most people don't need that level of performance because there's just no games out there that really require it. I remember when the GTX 480 series came out, neither the uh, Radeon 5870 nor the RX 480 could run Metro 2033 at above 60 frames per second. It just couldn't be done. Today, we don't have that. There are no games that can't be run unless they're just horribly optimized. But regardless... Due to that, NVIDIA has taken advantage of the situation and continued to scale things up. And I haven't really accepted that. I've done a lot of videos on the channel pretty much saying, hey, this sucks, we shouldn't do this, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter what I say. And I mean, if you guys do agree, that's great. I mean, technically I'm right, but the market doesn't care. That's what these numbers say to me is that it's already done. The market's moved on and this is the future. And AMD is also in the same boat. AMD is also scaling with NVIDIA's prices. 
This is part of the reason why you see RX 580s. You know, I had some people comment on my last video saying I'm not paying $360 for an RX 580 eight gigabyte nitro. Well, I mean, that's what they cost because some people are paying that. Uh, just recently, NVIDIA's prices have started to go down. I believe that's because the new GPUs will be announced in a few weeks. So they want to clear out old inventory before they announce that. Um, the Radeon cards will follow suit, but AMD is keeping in line with NVIDIA's price to performance scale because they too are also making more money. So for those of you out there that are going, hey, we need competition, NVIDIA is now the trendsetter, just like Intel is the trendsetter on the CPU market. Intel basically sets a price point. AMD will undercut them a little bit uh, as far as price to performance goes overall. And that's just the way it's going to be. And they'll do the same thing with GPUs. You know, uh, the next GPU, even if they had equal performing GPUs, much like with the RX 480 and the GTX 1060, you know, AMD just undercut them by like 10 bucks. You know, it really wasn't that big of a difference. Um, performance was relatively the same, but it was a less expensive alternative. Plus there's free sync. So in my eyes, when the prices are comparable and performance is comparable, AMD is a better way to go mainly due to free sync. But anyway, that's not, they're not going to be your savior. That that's kind of where they're going. They're going to follow Nvidia's trends. I would also venture a guess that they're going to start mimicking the way that nvidia does their product lines by segregating things a little bit more uh, a lot of people out there were very upset with rx vega i mean i was i was very disappointed in the performance for gaming but that thing is a monster at compute and is far more valuable than the 499 and 399 price points and that's part of the reason why they're selling for a lot more than their msrp is because technically those cards were sold for a much lower price than their actual real world value is they're not that valuable to gamers but they're very valuable to those people that need the compute performance so those gpus out there a lot of people are waiting for the prices to go down they're never going to hit msrp it's just not going to happen uh, i've talked to somebody on discord about that a hundred dollars over msrp after a rebate or something is going to be like the best case scenario that you get and because of the fact that amd had to undervalue and undersell their gpus for a mat you know just to compete in gaming likely i would expect them to cut down and just make another chip kind of like what nvidia did with the gp 102 instead of releasing a gp 100 to the mainstream they made another chip solely for the high-end enthusiast gaming consumer arena and likely amd will do something similar in the future just because it works these numbers don't lie this is a ridiculous amount of money to be making especially with the 65 ish percent margins that nvidia makes so 65 ish percent of this is all profit for nvidia now i know this isn't the news a lot of people wanted to hear but this is the reality of it the future is going to be more money less performance gain and that's pretty much it now what i can recommend to all gamers out there is to hold on to your money and wait until the value gets to a certain point. For example, I just got an RX 580. Uh, I did the video on that the other day. So to me, it's worth upgrading once we hit a 100% increase in performance, okay? So if we go on tech power up here, to gain 100%, we're looking at basically GTX 1080 Ti level performance. Now for me, GPUs are only worth anywhere between $300 and $400, which means that it does not make sense for me to upgrade until I can get a GTX 1080 level or 1080 Ti level GPU from either manufacturer, it doesn't really matter to me, for $300 to $400. Now, will that happen in this particular generation? It seems highly unlikely, but the following generation, that may be possible. Ultimately, it's going to come down to you monitoring yourself and tempering your own expectations. Don't buy a new class of GPU just because it has a higher number on it if the performance gains aren't worth the price difference. Meaning if you could sell your card for 200 bucks and then you can get the card that you want for five or $600, is it really worth that three or $400 increase? Like I said, if it's not double the performance in my eyes, it's simply not worth it because the gains aren't gonna be there uh, because you're gonna want at least twice the performance level to get from 1080p to 1440p, which is double the pixels. So by doubling your performance, you'll gain basically the same performance level that you see at your current resolution 
just on a higher resolution if you wanted to go that route or if you want to go from 60 frames per second gaming up to 120 or from 120 to 124 those are doubling so by doubling your gpu performance you'll be able to achieve those goals easier now with uh the new ray tracing and stuff G newer gpus may become necessary to do that here in the near future we don't really know we haven't had new graphical features actually introduced into gaming in a long time so i'm not sure how that's really going to work out but that's still going to be several years away the first titles that do take advantage of that are basically just going to be like added on just to go hey look it's ray tracing and it's cool basically they're just gonna be for demos and benchmarks and whatnot so i wouldn't be too terribly worried about trying to buy towards the future uh that we have no idea what's actually going to happen there that's just my suggestion is to go ahead and just be smart about things you can pick things up secondhand you know for me i'll probably pick up a 1080 ti later on in the future once the prices do get around that three to four hundred dollar mark if they get down that low i don't know if they will but to me at that particular price point that level of gpu is definitely worth the upgrade when we can get there well already guys let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below when looking at those numbers does it say the same thing to you does it speak to you in the same way that this is pretty much it and the market's just going to continue to ride it out no matter what happens out there um just let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below and if you like this video please hit that like button please subscribe please share with friends that really helps me out i would definitely share this this is kind of one of those things especially for older gamers that are having a hard time kind of coming to grips with where things are going we just need to realize that this is it. This is how things are going to go. This is how things are going to continue to go because people keep buying into it. So clearly the market accepts this particular path and we just kind of need to get over it and monitor ourselves personally and use a system kind of like I showed you there. For me, the 100% increase makes sense to me, but everybody's is going to be different. But like I said, let me know what you guys think there. Share this with people. This could be very eye-opening and possibly somebody that's sitting on the fence waiting for something new. They might just say, screw it. You're right. You know, uh, an RX 580 or a GTX 1060, that's, that's all I need. I don't really need to wait, whatever. So that might help them out, especially with prices going down right now. Who knows what's going to happen with crypto as time goes on. That could change too. And if you guys need any gaming gear, please click the affiliate links down below. Those are still Elric's from Tech of Tomorrow. Uh, I really appreciate everybody who's been doing that. I really appreciate you helping him out and the support that we've shown. That's awesome. I appreciate you guys for that. And that's all I have for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.